Hello you guys, long time no see. This is Cress at Starcrossed Books, and this is my March Mystery Madness TBR. Uh, usually I don't read mysteries, but I, I saw this thing floating around on Twitter and I thought, hey, you got a couple mysteries kind of lingering in your TBR pile, might as well get rid of them now. And of course I made a trip to Kinokuni and kind of got some more. Didn't want to do that, but I did it anyway. So, there are a couple of prompts in the March Mystery Madness um, event, and I'm doing a couple. I'm only reading four books, so uh, we'll see how it goes. So, the first thing on my list that I didn't really do, I kind of went out of order, um, is the shelf prompt in which you take a book from your shelf that you already had and the Yard by Alex Grecian has been sitting on my shelf for like a year. I thought it was really cool. I mean, look how cool like, this cover is. Noir and creepy and mysterious. Um, the basic premise is a year after Jack the Ripper stalked London, there was a new killer on the loose. Um, and he apparently has not yet reckoned with Scotland Yard's newly formed Murder Squad, um, featuring the new recruit Walter Day and forensic pathologist Dr. Kingsley. So, we'll see how it goes. I mean, I intend to read it this month, so, mmm, Cress, get on it. God, I'm going out of order. Next up on the list is Death on the Nile by Agatha Christie, which I will shelf under my new category, though it could fall in lots of them, like historical, it's in a foreign land, um, it's on my shelf now. Yeah, I, when I decided that I was going to do March Mystery Madness, I kind of splurged and went to Kinokuniya and bought more books, and that was a mistake. But not a mistake, but a mistake. Uh, yeah, so Death on the Nile is, well, here, it's a Hercule Perot, pro, pro, um, mystery. I've never actually read any Agatha Christie before this, and I must say, it was really enjoyable. I really liked it. Um, so just in case you're not familiar with, um, the plot, the tranquility of a cruise along the Nile was shattered by the discovery that Lynette Ridgeway had been shot through the head. She was young, stylish, and beautiful. A girl who had everything until she lost her life. Her kill Perot, call, we called on an earlier outburst by a fellow passenger. I'd like to put my dear little pistol against her head and just press the trigger. Yet, in this exotic setting, nothing was ever quite what it seemed. Now, I really enjoyed this. It was a lot of fun to read. Unfortunately, you know, there was some things that I wasn't really kind of meh about. I think I gave this a three star when I read it last week. Um, yeah, there was just evidence being, like, pulled up out of thin air and then not being explained, like, how that evidence was even discovered. It was just like, ha! Ah, here is this thing that the manager has brought to me! Where did he get it? Where did he get it? Um, but yeah, this is the, I think this is the next, um, Perot mystery that's going to be adapted again for the big screen. I mean, I know there was an adaptation in the 70s, I believe, um, but after the I believe Murder on the Orient Express was successful. I haven't watched it. I would really like to. I, I hear rumors, or I saw on news sites that um, Death on the Nile is the next one to be adapted. So that would be really interesting, and hopefully will offer me some clarity when we get to it. We'll see. Next on the list is my current read, which is Murder at the Brightwell. Um, by Ashley Weaver. Um, this is a 1930s historical Agatha Christie-esque um, mystery. Um, basically, uh, instead of, you know, having a 
elder older gentleman belgian older ge belgium detective you have a young vivacious I'm not really she's not really vivacious um you have a young um young woman very wealthy solves mysteries with her handsome playboy husband it, it sounded like fun um it, it it's super dramatic so dramatic um and i guess this one i will shelve it under historical because it's 1930s um yeah basically let's see ahem amory aims a wealthy young woman questioning her marriage to her notoriously charming playboy husband milo is looking for a change when she accepts a request from her former fiance gil trent she know she does not know that she'll soon become embroiled in a murder investigation that will not only test her friendship with gil but will also upset the status quo with her husband her husband sounds like a jerk so far he's been a jerk um amory accompanies gil to the luxurious brightwell hotel on the south coast of England, in an attempt to prevent the marriage of his sister, Emmeline, to Rupert Howe, a disreputable ladies' man. However, it soon becomes clear that there is more than her happiness at stake, when Rupert is murdered and Gil is arrested for the crime. <sighs> Matters are further complicated by Milo's unintended unexpected arrival, and as the line between friend and foe becomes increasingly blurred, Amory must decide where her heart lies and catch the killer before she too becomes a victim. I make faces, it's fun, leave me alone, you're watching this channel for some reason. Um, this is super dramatic, super, super, super dramatic, like, throw yourself against a wall and like weeping sort of dramaticness so if that's not what you're into don't don't read this but i'm having a blast because it's just so over the top it's it's great i'm i'm really having fun with this um i'll possibly read the rest of the series because there's at least three more and like another one coming out this year um but once again i'm at the mercy of kino kunia and this was in the news section so We'll see if I get to read that. Anyway, moving on. Next on my list is Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn. Um, I this is a thriller. Um, I'm gonna shelve this under the opposite prompt because I never really read thrillers. I'm more of a gothic horror girl. Um. So, like, a modern contemporary thriller is not usually my jam, but hey, opposite time! Um, I honestly don't know what this is really about, beside, like, a bad husband. I, but that was, like, a conception that I got from, um, watching the trailer for the movie when that was a thing, because this is, like, a movie cover. Um, alright, so let's read, um... On a warm summer morning, more morning, in northern Carthage, Missouri, it is Nick and Amy Dune's fifth wedding anniversary. Presents are being wrapped and plans are being made when Nick's clever and beautiful wife disappears. As the police begin to investigate, the town golden boy parades a series of lies, deceits, and inappropriate behavior. Nick is oddly evasive, and he's definitely built bitter. But is he really a killer? I don't know. Is he? We'll find out when I get there. I hear good things. I mean, Gillian Flynn's popular for a reason, right? So. And I know I said four books, but it's actually going to be five. I'm going to attempt five. Um, I realized that I have borrowed, ha ha ha, number two prompt, borrow, um, borrowed The Diviners by Liva Bray, um, from my friend a while ago. I, like, a long time ago, I would, I'm probably gonna have to start over because it's been too long. Um, I, I've just been having problems reading it. Um, for those who don't know, The Diviners is a 1920s historical 
young adult paranormal um fantasy it's a murder mystery um that's super popular on booktube i know i guess like mixed reviews on you booktube i don't know i know a lot of people like it um i i'm trying really this should literally be everything i wanted out of a book it's paranormal it's historical uh it's ya there's you know feeling romances and whatever in this um but i don't know why i've been struggling so much with it um and obviously there's a murder like there's a ghost murder and that sounds really cool i think my problem is i read a short story by Lila Bray and i really just didn't enjoy it it wasn't really that good uh, and it just left a really bad taste in my mouth so whenever i try to go back to this i'm just feeling kind of eh. but i'm going to try and push through this because this is something i've really been looking forward to and i've had lots of friends tell me that they like it and i really want to give it a fair shot um but god that short story was bad um yeah so anyway, those are my March Mystery Madness um, books that I intend on reading. I'm sure I'm going to read more. Um, probably not mystery, uh, but, you know, I still have three more to go. And March is still young. Um, so, yeah, if you guys have read any of the books that I've talked about um, or are reading different books for this event, please let me know. Comment down below. Please like, subscribe. Um, I really want to talk to you guys, so if you have any, like, opposing opinions on anything I've talked about, please say something. Um, so yeah, this is great. See you next time.